Athletes just can't be too extreme these days. After all, if you're not defying death, how are you going to lock up that Red Bull sponsorship? Oh, and the subsequent development deal with Red Bull TV. Now, we've seen a few jetpack designs in the last year, and the hydro jetpack is like a tourist trap for anyone who can make the weight limit, but one Slovenian freestyle skier is redefining the term jet ski. This week, Red Bull released a video of ski cross world champion Philippe Flissar clipping into his skis and strapping on a jetpack. According to Red Bull, the jetpack can run at up to 96,000 RPM and produce a jet blast that reaches up to 850 degrees C. With the pack, he can speed through the slopes of Slovenia at more than 75 miles per hour. That is just, I have been down some hills and 75 feels risky. Really risky. I mean, it could be the next tourist trap, though I wonder what the deposit would be for a jetpack. Probably hefty. He is going to take that fancy mustache and run it in the tree. Ah, oh, fire me up. Oh. Oh, oh. Is she going? Coyote dies all the time. Led by Nova Innovation in Scotland, a European Tidal Energy Consortium received $4.63 million in grant funding from the European Commission for its direct drive power takeoff or PTO solution for tidal turbines. According to the group behind the Tidal Tech, the system could reduce the lifetime cost of tidal power by 20% and provide long-term system reliability. The project is called TIPA, or TIPA, or tip a or tip a which stands for Tidal Turbine Power Takeoff Accelerator. So it's kind of like a liberal use of the acronym. They plan to save money by replacing the conventional PTO in tidal turbines with an advanced direct drive PTO. The PTO subsystem is the component that transforms the mechanical power in the tidal turbine rotor into electricity that is exported into the grid. Basically, they're going to replace the gearbox and conventional generator in the turbine with a PTO that has a direct drive generator. The group hopes that the direct drive PTO will increase the commercial viability of tidal turbines by reducing the cost of operation and maintenance. The project will run for 36 months, which should give the team enough time to build the new PTO and conduct accelerated onshore testing in Germany, which will be followed by in-sea testing in Scotland with third-party validation of the design and the test results. They'll likely test it off the coast of the Shetland Islands, where Nova Innovation already has a pair of 100 kilowatt tidal turbines installed. After three years, and if the technology is proven capable, the group will commercialize the product to be licensed and sold. I mean, after all, what good is a new technology unless you can make a profit off of it? Oh, it's good for the world. <laughs> Coyote dies all the time. And now for the feel-good story of the week. When Ben Ryan's son, Saul, was born, a complication at birth resulted in the amputation of most of his lower left arm. According to the National Health Service in the UK, it would be three years before Saul would receive a myoelectric prosthetic, and a full year before he was fit with a cosmetic non-functional prosthesis. Ben couldn't sit and watch as his son lost responsiveness to his left arm, so he did what any father would do. He quit his job as a teacher and taught himself how to make Saul a new prosthetic arm. I mean, actually, who am I kidding? Like some fathers can't even be troubled to see their kids. This man built his son a limb. He is a hero. He is a hero, like a real hero. When his son was just five weeks old, Ben built him his first prosthetic out of a sponge and a bandage. It wasn't an ideal long-term solution, so the ambitious father taught himself how to use Autodesk Fusion 360 and designed a hydraulic prosthetic arm that he 3D printed on a Stratasys Connex 3D printer. The lightweight design weighs less than traditional alternatives and it's body power, which means that he uses fluid in the socket to actuate the grip on the hand. With Ben's new design, infants like Saul can grow accustomed to their new arm earlier than traditional fittings. I mean, the NHS would have taken 11 weeks to turn a plaster cast into a wearable prosthetic. Ben's new design can be built in five days. Well, he spun his patented technology into a new company, Ambionics, and his team has supported his new role as founder and CEO, but the money has dried up and he's desperate for a cash infusion. Yesterday, 
he launched a crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo to keep his new company in dream afloat. He needs about $184,000 to keep this dream alive. While he's had offers from traditional investors, he needs to move faster to bring his product to market. He needs $98,000 for usability trials to try and secure CE and FDA approval, $60,000 to $74,000 for prototyping and product development costs, and $30,000 to protect the patents and commercialize the business. For more information and to support Ben, please click the link below. I'm David Manti. This is Engineering by Design. I mean, seriously, click the link. The man is a hero. He made his son an arm. Made in an arm. The only thing my dad made me was a hard worker. Thanks, Bob.